What is everybody? It's just Lava, and welcome back to a brand new video where today I'm going to show you how to apply live effects to your audio with Adobe Audition, Streamlabs OBS, and a virtual audio cable. I don't want to waste your time, so let's get right into this video. So after that intro, you might be wondering, what is a virtual audio cable? And basically, it is going to be the thing that allows you to route your audio from Adobe Audition into Streamlabs OBS. All you have to do to get this virtual audio cable is go into your web browser, type in VAC audio cable, then go to the first link, or you can click the link in the description of this video to get to this exact same website and then you click the little orange download button right here and then it will download the program for you just go through the process of downloading it it's just like downloading any other app and then once you have that downloaded go over here to your sound settings by right clicking on your little sound bite right here then go to sounds and then once you have this little box go to your recordings tab and find the microphone that you want to use to record into Adobe Audition because I'm using my Shure SM7B and my Focusrite Scarlett. It is called the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 right here, or not Focusrite, but just Scarlett 2i2 right here. So that's how I know that this is the microphone that I'm using. And also I can tell because it is the only microphone that's getting an input and it's the only microphone that I currently have in front of me to record. So I know this is the microphone I need. You can go through the same steps and process to figure out which microphone that you are using if you don't already know. Then you want to right click on it and go to properties. Then go to advanced and see what this little box right here says. Just memorize what that says and then you can go out of their properties for your microphone. Next, you want to scroll down in your recordings tab and find your cable output. This should be here after you downloaded the virtual audio cable. Go into its properties and then go to the same advanced tab and then switch this box in this virtual audio cable to say the same thing as it did in your microphone. Just make sure that your virtual audio cable and your microphone match and then do that one more time in your playback tab. Go to the properties of the virtual audio cable in your playback tab. Go to advanced and then do the exact same thing. Make sure this box matches all the other boxes that we just fixed. Then after you've done all of that, just press OK right here and then go to Adobe Audition itself. In Adobe Audition, you're going to want to click File, New, and then open a multi-track session. Name it whatever you want and then open it. After you do that, you should be greeted with the same window that you see right here, except you should not be able to see any effects added right here and this little green bar should not be moving just yet. Now, after you open a multi-track session, go to Edit, Preferences, and then Audio Hardware, and then set the default input to whatever microphone you want to use to record into Adobe Audition, and then set the default output to Cable Input VB Audio Virtual Cable. After you've done that, go over to your first track in your multi-track session, and then set this box to mono, and then the microphone that you are using. If you don't see your microphone in mono, you can try stereo. Also, if you don't see two different inputs in mono, don't worry. Um, the reason that mine has two inputs is because the um, audio interface that I'm using has two microphone inputs. I'm currently using microphone input one, so that's why I haven't set it to the first one. So like I said, your microphone should either be in mono or stereo. Just search through these two boxes and then choose your microphone. If your microphone is in mono and stereo, choose it in mono, and then go down to the second box underneath the first one, and then go to stereo and choose cable input VB audio virtual cable one. Next, you want to click this little R right here to enable recording in this line in this track one, and then you're going to want to hit this little I right here so that your audio will be sent into the virtual audio cable. Technically, when you press the I, it's supposed to enable a playback back into your headphones, but since we are instead routing this audio into that virtual audio cable, you shouldn't be able to hear the playback in your headphones because it's not playing back into your headphones. Next, after you've done all your setup for Adobe Audition, you want to go over to OBS or Streamlabs OBS, whichever one you're using, and then you want to go down to the tab that you want to record your microphone into then you want to click the little cog wheel go to properties and then once you're in properties choose cable output vb virtual cable after you do that you should be able to see this green bar start moving whenever you talk into your microphone however there should be a little bit of a delay and i'm going to show you how to fix that here in a bit but for right now i want to show you 
how to set up a couple of effects in Adobe Audition. So right now you're hearing my microphone after it is being ran through all the effects I have set up in Adobe Audition. So I want to show you what those effects are and exactly what they're doing to my microphone. Now, not everybody's microphone is exactly the same. Almost everybody's microphone is different actually because, because there are a lot of factors that choose exactly what a microphone is going to sound like. So I would not recommend that you put input these exact settings. Also, I would recommend playing around with these settings yourself and setting them up according to what your microphone sounds like. So just play around with them and see what you like, see what sounds best on your microphone. And also play around with some of the other settings in this program. Um, after you start playing around with some of the settings, you figure out kind of what they do. And then once you get all your effects set up, you can just go right here and um, save it as a preset so that you don't have to reset them up every time you open Adobe Audition. But like I said, I was gonna do like five minutes ago, I'm gonna go through and show you all the effects that I have set in my Adobe Audition. So the first thing I have set is Adaptive Noise Reduction. To get to it, you just click on this little arrow and then you go down to Noise Reduction and then Adaptive Noise Reduction. Basically what it does is exactly what it says it does. It gets rid of background noise in your audio. So if you have a fan running in your room or you're recording next to a really loud PC like I am, it helps a lot to add Adaptive Noise Reduction. It doesn't fix your problem um, completely. It doesn't completely get rid of the noise, but it does help a lot and make your audio sound a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, you know, a little bit less background noise. The second thing that I have set up in my audio chain is my graphic equalizer or EQ. I have the 20 band EQ set up. I don't like the paramedic or not paramedic, the, uh, what is it called? I don't like the uh, param parameter, whatever this one is, I don't like it. I know a lot of people use it, um, but personally, I don't really like that one. I prefer just the normal 20 band equalizer. So basically how I have my IQ set up is to have a little bit of a high pass filter so that it gets rid of a lot of that um, really low end um, rumble that you don't really want in your recordings. Then I have a low end boost, which I know that sounds weird, but basically I'm boosting the low end where my voice is and then getting rid of the low end that is below my voice in the audio spectrum. So basically the part of the audio where my voice is, I'm boosting that to make the low end just a little bit, you know, more crisp. And then below where it's actually getting information from my voice, I'm cutting that out with a high pass filter. Then at the top, I have a little bit of a boost to the high end to make the trebles in the microphone sound a little bit better because this microphone um, does kind of have a little bit of a muddy high end. It still sounds really good, but um, the high end is not very present in this microphone. So I boost the high end a little bit and then I have a little bit of a low pass filter, which basically gets rid of a lot of that high end, like kind of like hissy noises that you get um, in some microphones. This microphone doesn't have a huge problem with that, but I still just do it anyway, because I feel like it helps a little bit at least. The next setting I have set up in my um, audio chain is a de -esser, which basically just gets rid of that really harsh like noise when you say S's and K's and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm not really that sure of how to use this de -esser. Basically what I did is I, um, told it to output sibilants only and then um, wherever that was outputting I just put this little box around that and then just played with this bar until it sounded good. I'm not really sure exactly how to use the de -er. I just know that it sounded better once I set it up how I wanted to. Like I said, I know what it does, I just don't exactly know how to use it. And then the last thing I have set up is a multiband compressor. I have it set to kill the harshness, which basically just kills that high end just a little bit more because I don't know if you can tell, but I really hate high end hissiness. I like a lot of low end and not a lot of high end. So that's why I have my audio set to not have a ton of high end. If you don't like that, you can set it up to have a lot of high end and like no low end. Cause I know there's some people that like it like that. You can set it to be very perfectly mid range and so you have a lot of mids and not a lot of high or low end. And then that sounds good to some people too. Like I said, you can set your audio up however you want to. It doesn't really matter. This is just the audio settings that I use. And then last but not least, the last thing that I wanna show you how to do is fix the delay that you're going to have when your audio gets ran from Adobe Audition into Streamlabs OBS. Now basically what you do to fix the audio delay is you don't get rid of the audio delay, you just delay your video as well. I know that sounds weird, but if you record with your video and your audio delayed, by the time that you save your recording and look back at it, everything is in sync. So the way that you delay your face cam is you go to your video capture device, you go to filters and you add a video delay async and then you basically just increase the milliseconds by 100s until it sounds about right and then if you want to you can go in and make it perfect by going up and down um, by like 50s and 20s. I found that 700 did really good for me, a 700 millisecond delay um, set my video and my audio to be pretty in sync. So that is what I'm using. It works the same way no matter which one you're using. You just right click and go to filters and you add a render delay. 
but render delays can only be set to 500 milliseconds. So what I did is just add a second render delay set up to 200 milliseconds because my audio is a 700 millisecond delay. So yeah, if your audio is more than a 500 millisecond delay, just add a second render delay and it works just fine. So if you followed every step in this video correctly, you should have everything up right. If it's not working for you and you just can't figure out why, shoot me a comment in the comment section below and um, tell me exactly what's wrong and I might be able to help you. I'm not saying I will be able to help you because I'm not really good at this. I'm just saying that I might be able to help with the problem that you're having. Also, like I said, this might work in a free program like Audacity. I just haven't tried it before because I use Adobe Audition as my main software. But if I can figure out how to do this in Audacity, I'll make a second video um, showing how to do it in there because it's free and it doesn't cost money and not paying money for stuff is pretty cool. Anyway, that should be it. Make sure to like this video if it helped you and subscribe to the channel if you want more tutorials or just any other videos because I really don't post anything specific I just kind of post whatever so if you liked me and you like my face go down and subscribe to the channel um, to get more of it anyway that should be it for this video and I'll see you guys later bye bye